Welcome to the Jamoti Podcast. We are all surrounded by amazing coaches and leaders. So let's get an inside look at not just what they do, but how they do what they do. After all, becoming the best versions of ourselves is Jamoti, just a matter of doing it. Coaches, the Jamoti Podcast is powered by Bology. Manage and measure your player's skill development and increase accountability year-round utilizing the Bology app. Boost inter-squad competition with drills backed by the National High School Basketball Coaches Association, including a 40-shot Bology skills assessment. Please visit Bology.com slash teams for information on how you can provide this resource for your team. I'm, I love getting to hear from coaches about their daily habits. You know, you and I have the same amount of time every day, but... I have to make sure that I'm using my seconds wisely, as I'm sure successful people like you do as well. So what daily habits set you up for success? You know, I think I've got to do some some little things every single day or else I just don't feel right. I got to get some wins to start out the day. And that's with starting out with a devotional and uh, a workout, those two things. And then uh, I've also been uh, reading Coach DeShazzo or Kevin DeShazzo's uh, leadership um, uninterrupted. And, uh, that's been a really good, it's kind of like a, a daily leadership uh, book that oh, you wow. can just cut. Yeah, it's it's been great. And so doing those three things in the morning, that's kind of part of my routine. That's really helped me a lot. I want to try and feed myself with positive things before I get to the office each day. How much, uh, what are your, what's your weekly workout split look like right now? Or when you say workout, what are you trying to accomplish? Well, it, it's not impressive. I wouldn't, I wouldn't record it or want anybody watching my workouts, but I'm lifting Monday, Wednesday, and Friday, and then you know every other day I'm doing some kind of cardio. It's not nothing to brag about, but I'm just I keep it moving. I just got to be in shape to keep up with these guys over the course of the season and ride the bus. Frankly, you know, ride that bus, uh, all the miles that we put and all the recruiting trips. You got to be in good shape to keep up, and if you want to make long tournament runs, you got to be feeling good late into the season. Yeah, because so I think so often we're worried about the energy and the health of our players. And we completely forget our own and how, but what I wonder how many times, you know, our players can even feel or sense when we're drooping or we're, we're losing a little bit. So that routine that you have, I think is powerful five days a week, coach. That's impressive. So don't sell yourself short there. We'll keep trying. We'll keep trying. <laughs> but I agree with you. The energy level is contagious. And uh, I try to, I pride myself on having a tremendous amount of energy at every practice. And so you know, I'll, you know, I can challenge the guys. I try to be the most energetic, most enthusiastic person in the gym every practice. I'm not let that way in the office. I'm really laid back. Um, you know, I'm not really that way if I'm, if we go out I'm meeting one of the, somebody at for out for dinner, but in, in practice, I'm very passionate and, and everybody can enjoy that. I love what I'm doing and I'm excited about the opportunity I get each day to practice with our guys. That's a that's a great nugget, though. I think you see sometimes you see these at a clinic or something, these, these enthusiastic coaches. It just seems to be so natural coming out of them. And and I'm I'm this I'm the same way too. I'm very spirited and energetic during second period athletics. But I I I don't know if I, I'm not that way walking through the hallway. I don't feel like every single day. So, it, but we ask our players to do the same thing. They may not be that person in the classroom or at home but they have to bring that spirit that energy so again another great reminder for us to do the same thing yeah absolutely absolutely we we stress the same thing to our guys it may not be your personality to talk but we need you to do that we need you to be in block everything out for this hour and a half that we're practicing we don't practice very long we want our guys to be focused for just under an hour and a half we want them locked in and involved emotionally and spiritually in what we're doing I've noticed that uh, players have different leadership styles. And I've been trying, I think early on when I was really a young coach, I wanted them all to be the same, all to be at the same level, the same height. What's your advice on helping our players become the leaders that they're capable of lead in a way that not as just comfortable, but leads to the most success for them? Yeah, leadership is everything. And I think it is so undertaught leadership. And we try to be very intentional with leading guys or teaching them how to lead. We have a leadership group. We've done it for about seven or eight years and uh, a leadership team. And we meet with them once a week to talk about leadership things. So in, in some cases, we'll bring a speaker in. Uh, this year, I'm meeting with each uh, person that's on our leadership team individually and talking about what they specifically need to do to lead. 
So we're not just saying, hey, Abe, you're the captain this year. I'm saying, Abe, you're the captain this year. We need you to encourage people when they're not doing well. We need you to remind them of all the things we're doing. Uh, you you need to um, say these specific things. When we're passing, you need mm -hmm. to tell your team, catch with an attitude. When you see somebody jump stop low and wide, you need to make sure you're rewarding those things. We specifically have specific things that they can do. And I think, you know, if you have something specific that you can do, and it builds confidence if you know what to say. Because uh, many times, especially when I started out, I'm just like, he's not a very good leader. He's not doing a good job. Well, I didn't teach him how to do it. And so now we're very intentional about what our guys need to do. And then when they get that confidence, they start to grow and branch out and do more and more. Coach, I think you're right on the money. Uh, PGC, they, they talk about, uh, we, we ask players, why are most players quiet? You know, get some different answers like uh, they're too shy, possibly. Uh, maybe they're too cool. That can happen too. But yeah. the majority of them, they just don't know what to say. And, and so uh, you walk into a practice here. We got to talk. We got to talk. Okay, that's great. Uh, do you want mindless chatter? You know, or do you want something specific? So when you tell them, we need you to be a great leader, if you just leave it at that, man, what does that mean? But by giving the, them those directives, that that ensures or gives them confidence, a direction to, to point their leadership. I think that's great, man. Yeah, like, so even in a practice plan, well, I'll go through it with the guys on the leadership team sometime this week, probably, and say, during this drill, you need to say this. On this drill, you need to say that. And, and you know, the kids really respond. Most of the time, they'll respond really well to it. And, uh, the, the, you know, they want to have the answers. They want to help their teammates. And um, we're just providing that opportunity for them to be confident and lead their team. It's kind of like you're bringing them in, in, you know, behind the curtain a little bit into the process of what you and your coaching staff does. So I would imagine you get really good buy-in from them because they feel like they're a, really a part of the culture, moving everybody forward. I love it. No, they do. And we talk about it a lot of times, like our leadership team needs to, to stay strong and they need to do, they need to be here all season. And then the other guys on the team, they may be up and down, but we're confident over the last eight or 10 years of this leadership team, if they can stay the course, this leadership, I got a group of four to six kids that can stay the course, no matter what, uh, you know, you always have the confidence as a coach, you always have the confidence if there's a discipline issue or you're making a tough decision, you know those guys have your back moving forward, and it gives me a ton of confidence knowing I got these guys with me. They're they're 100% behind me. They know the reason why we're doing it, and they care. And, uh, you know, it's given me a lot of confidence as a coach. How are you choosing the four to six guys? It's a combination of things. Each has been different. We we don't do the voting. Uh, we, we, we don't do that. Um, this last year, we opened it up to the returners on who was interested. And then the there's three or four I like guys. That. I like that. So the yeah. reason why I like that the most is there'll be kids who uh, didn't volunteer. And if they complain about anything, I'm um, saying, so, hey, you had your chance. You know, you had your chance. Because there are some benefits to being the leadership team. It's mostly about learning how to be a servant leader. But they do pick uniforms and pick where we're going to eat and do some uh -huh. of those things. Uh, that which everybody likes to do, yeah. but they also have to clean the bus and, you know, pick up after everybody straighten the chairs and do those kind of things. But uh, th this group of guys, you know, that they, they've been great. This particular leadership group that we have, I think gives us a really good chance to win a championship. Let's just say you have a, one of your best players, but he happens to be one of these guys with his mood, his energy, but, you know, he just has the skill, the talent to be great. Do you bring him on that leadership team in an effort to maybe help him get to where you see he could be? Or, you know, you just you trust that other guys will bring him up? It's been both. Most of the time we want that guy on the leadership team. Uh, he may not have as big a role as communicating to the other guys on the team. And just like you said, everyone has different strengths. We'll identify guys' strengths and have them lead from their strengths. So some guys will be, you know, really vocal in practice. Other guys might be helping guys do shooting drills before practice. Some guys lead our stretching and rolling, foam rolling. We have other guys who help lead in the weight room, others, you know, with the training room and that kind of thing. But 
uh, there's all different ways to lead. And we just, if we see somebody with, you know, st really strong character and leadership ability, we're trying to, you know, really try and have that lead the rest of the guys and help to build our culture. You said you meet with them at least once a week and you're trying to meet with them individually right now. Yeah, this year, it's just the schedule worked out better uh, to meet them individually. And the years past, we've met once a week, like over lunch. It just didn't work out with the class schedules this week, this mm -hmm. year. Uh, so, um, but the individual meetings are going well. I find that they, you know, the kids, uh, they don't give me excuses why they don't want to meet. Uh, but you got to have the right kids. You know, that's the key, having the right guys and then you know, treating them well. And in those meetings, I'm also giving them time on uh, how I can make them better. And so mm. they, they get a chance to, you know, hopefully they feel like they get a chance to get something out of it and improve as well. At the high school level, I think I've said it to younger players before, you know, like juniors and down guys, it, it's not just the seniors that that have to lead at every any anyone else can step into that role. And there's the whole idea of every, there's a leader in every locker but in your experience, is it better to have your seniors, older players, or do you have some times where a freshman or sophomore just has it in them and can command the respect of, of older teammates? How does that work out for you? Yeah, well, we've had, we had a kid from Allen, Texas, Myron Fisher, just a phenomenal kid. And uh, he was a sophomore, and, and we really pegged him as like a sixth or seventh man. He ended up being a starter that year, but preseason we picked him as like a – you know, like a sixth or seventh man on our team, we made him the captain of our team as a sophomore with two returning All-Americans on our team. And Myron was, you know, he's just one of the best leaders I've ever been around. Mm. And, uh, you know, at, at first, I, you know, the guys are like, you got to be kidding me. We have two <laughs> All-Americans and you're picking a sophomore that, you know, some of them, I'm not sure he's going to play, but he was just, I call him the Michael Jordan of life. This kid was just great. Wow. I mean, he had a ton of energy and just uh, he, he was a, about all the right things and about serving his his team. And we made him the captain. That was pro probably our first championship run. And, uh, I, you know, I didn't know how it was going to work out. A lot of a lot of times you get lucky and it worked out well. And then it gave me coach. Honestly, that gave me the confidence to start looking at leadership in a different way. When we picked, you know, we picked the sophomore yeah. who was not the best, definitely not the best player on the team as the captain of our team and the, and and on the leadership team you know over two all americans one who you know ended up playing pro two both of them ended up playing professional mm -hmm. basketball but two one four time all american in our program and another all american in our program and uh that just goes to show you leadership matters and it's been big in our program and it's it's been a huge focus on what we're doing mm -hmm. coach what was the book again that you're reading right now it's leadership uh interrupted by kevin to Shazo. And it's like a daily, you know, daily leadership, daily leadership insight. It only takes about four or five minutes to read, awesome. uh, but it's been great. It's been really good. Thank you for checking out today's episode. Please take a moment to subscribe to this podcast, share it with your fellow coaches and find us on social media for what's coming up next on the Jamoti podcast. It's just a matter of doing it.